I told myself I would learn to be a grown-up this year. I told my mom I would learn to cook this summer. Said, Mom, I gave up my meal plan to live in apartment-style upperclassmen dorms. Like grown-ups. <laughs> she smiles. And I know it's not because she thinks I will learn. It's something about the way I say it while I watch her. Home for spring break and heat is still on in the house because winter hasn't broken yet. And Mom is making omelets at 1 p.m. for brunch, I guess. It might have woke breakfast because I just woke up anyway, rolled out of the cocoon of bed sheets that always seems to make the privilege of my laziness feel a lot less like something I need to leave and a lot more like something I should erase. I slouch across the kitchen in sweatpants that still fit me from middle school. Maybe a little tighter across the butt, or so I would like to <laughs> My sister, 15, reaches for a cereal box, stands up straight, 5 feet 9 inches. She does not fit her clothes from middle school anymore. I beat the eggs until mom takes a bowl, the bowl away from me. She says, no, you have to fold it like this. Use your whole arm. I look at the little tin bowl like, really? My whole arm? <laughs> I do not let her see this look. I listen like the child I am. Beat the yolk harder. Wait until the life of it doesn't feel so new. Dad walks in lugging blurry lines that have worn far enough into his forehead to stay there when he smiles at the pan and says, Oh, Isha, that's for me, right? <laughs> I take the plate to him in his home office. He feels satisfied when he takes a bite, have to rub it off, and I need to ask him to pick up my birth control pills from the drugstore. I don't want to walk, and I haven't gone back to take my driving test yet, the one I failed before I even got out of the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> Remember how I said my laziness is a privilege? I never tell him what the pills are, I just say medicine. Not that he has much to worry about, because to me they're more like acne control. And I'm always forgetting to take them, so it screws up my schedule and breaks me out, but I can't really imagine thinking of missed periods like a life in the making, because, I mean, I still fit my clothes from middle school. I go upstairs, make my bed, hug off the sweatpants with the stupid little pink heart decals on the side. I probably beg my mom to buy these. Throw them on the laundry pile, wait for the machine to start stirring, wonder when I won't fit those stupid sweatpants anymore. I spend a few hours fighting the urge to take a nap, watch the sunlight crawl, window pane shadows across my walls, sinking in my bed. My mom has trouble sleeping, but she can't take a nap, says when she's up, she has to keep going. I get up, pull the packet of readings out of my backpack, ones I haven't touched yet, go downstairs, sit in the living room. I've dragged through 100 pages of Native American history before I start to daydream about my hair in the wind, and my hand on a wheel, and the way you can see the air floating above the road when it gets hot. My head is the pages. I wake up to the smell of chicken, move from couch to kitchen, where my mom is chopping onions. She does not have to ask for 